right, we are heading from Lankford to University of Victoria, UVic, and uh, we're going to go see a sign shop there and talk about some stuff. And on the way there, I want to talk to you guys about some stuff as well. Uh, there has been a few people uh, in the mailbag there who've been asking questions about projects that people can do with lasers in schools. You see, there's a lot of people in schools who want these machines and know they're going to be amazing for the students. They're great teaching tools. And the educators know this. Uh, unfortunately, budgets the way they are in schools, uh, people are having a hard time convincing their, you know, their uh, administrators or, you know, their superiors in some way to get a laser machine in their classroom. And so a lot of people have called me and says, you know, what is it that we can tell the administrators, the, the superintendents, uh, to get them to listen? And uh, there are a few things that um, I've gone over. Uh, uh, the very first thing is, is it brings students together. Um, every time I go into a maker lab at a school or you know some kind of a shop that has a laser, you see kids of all different backgrounds gathered around. Uh, they're collaborating with one another. You see, people. When I went to school, we didn't we didn't have a lot of this this kind of technology that people could all gather around. Like it's. It's fascinating to all types of people for the, the you know the, the maker kids or for you know the, the they're super cool kids who want to you know have have you know their favorite comic book let's say a character uh, on their on the objects that they make so what I see is people are collaborating you know there, there could be someone who's really good at soldering and another person who's really good at at Adobe Illustrator uh, and there could be another person who's a great artist or there's another person who's a great maker and they all get together and they are they are talking amongst themselves getting feedback from one another and making stuff together and so this this collaboration amongst the students brings some really cool stuff to the classroom um, and uh, and it's this, this kind of stuff that I, I like. So, um, another thing is that the students can put whatever they want on their projects. So if you're a metalwork teacher or a woodwork teacher or fabric, food, art, I mean, there's so many different disciplines in school that can use this machine. If you're not quite that into it because you're just making a wooden knife block and uh, maybe you're the kind of a kid who's just like, you know, I'm just making a knife block. I, I'm not really interested in this. I, I kind of have to take this course. Well, now suddenly you have the ability to put something cool, engrave something cool onto your knife block. So it's not just a knife block. It's like a super cool knife block. Uh, and believe me, uh, there are a lot of people who want to have that. They want to have their their personalization on that they want to maybe they have a some kind of a graffiti tag that they like or it's some kind of a as I said a comic book character um, these are the kinds of things that that help students buy in to the pro projects uh, you know it's it's you know the, the the teacher can say okay you're you're making this project but it's it's the it's the buy-in that they really need so uh, for some kids, it's the it's the finding of the raw material that they like. For some kids, it's it's a, the actual carving or building. Um, but for some kids, it's just the final outcome. And so, if the final outcome is amazing because they were able to personalize it, then I think there's going to be a lot a lot more more buy-in because there is speed involved in these machines. We can now get more student projects put through with each class. So instead of uh, maybe you had a CNC router or uh, a 3D printer, um, you could do maybe one or two projects a day before. Now with the laser, you can probably get 10 projects a class done. Um, as long as they're doing their work on the digital side, 
creating your vector lines for cutting or creating art for the engraving. That stuff is where you're really learning your, your you know, design dynamics. And then you throw it into the laser and cut it up and it's done. And one thing that really impresses a lot of sort of the higher level educators like the superintendents and the administrators is that we can prove that we can teach sort of uh, sort of spatial re recognition where you're you're designing in two dimensions and but you're creating a 3d object so this sort of spatial awareness where okay I'm building a wall I'm building another wall but I'm folding it uh, so that it it will be flat when I cut it so this kind of stuff is really great for the brain it allows uh, students and of course adults as well uh, to really think three-dimensional but work in two dimensions and when you can prove that this is something that is uh, a fantastic thing to teach students this is really going to be a big uh, plus for you when talking to your administrators excellent way to talk to your administrators about getting a laser in your school is to talk about what it can do for the school how you're gonna make money for the school how do you monetize this laser well there's a few ways one is awards um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people are sending out awards into uh, uh, into the schools and there's a lot of um, you know people are making you know paper awards or thing, things like this well you can start to create some very cool awards right in the school and you can have the students create them um, it gives them a job it allows you to actually produce your own say acrylic awards this kind of stuff for the actual school um, another thing is fundraising uh, you know there's always ways to raise money for a school and what's better than picking up a, a sheet of Baltic birch and cutting it into some cool dog tags I don't know you know uh, little little challenge coins um, these kinds of things that the, the students can trade or you know give away or um, I know that uh, my boss uh, uh, helped a, a school build some frames, some wooden frames uh, for a basketball tournament and it turned out amazing uh, and there were people lined up to buy these, these personalized frames with the kids name on them and then there was a photographer there to put the, the photography in and it was a really cool way to raise money for that team so using it as a, a money making machine for the school is a really fantastic way to convince your uh, uh, superiors, I guess, <laughs> to uh, to get you one of these. Some projects that are fantastic to work with in the schools, uh, you know, for sort of, sort of STEM or STEAM, um, is uh, is flight. So uh, there's a, a school in West Vancouver who's uh, using the laser to create airplanes with the kids and so um, I know uh, me and uh, one of our techs we created a a real flying RC plane it didn't take very long and uh, he actually flew it he actually took it up and zoomed it around and actually it was a really great plane and we just used foam core board paper foam core board from the uh, dollar store <laughs> so uh, they're especially fun to crash um, and uh, especially fun to, to fly so uh, we really like them anyway to produce 3d models uh, from 2d uh, spaces so um, I did a workshop at a school in Richmond uh, where we created houses little paper houses that the students had to fold uh, so but they had to create all of their uh, walls, roofs, little tabs to hold the roofs in place, all from uh, a 2D flat paper. And so it was fun watching them twist their brains into how do I make this 3D object from 2D? And then we we walked around and we, and we helped the kids. You know, uh, you know, how do you do this? How do you fold that? What's the side look like? You know, picture a house folded into a piece of paper. Um, and you could see their minds working very well to produce these little paper houses. It wasn't much, you know, it was a, 
there was really only one solution for a single piece of paper. It's just a tiny little square house with a triangle roof. It kind of looks like my house. Um, and, uh, but it was, you know, they got to decorate the outside of the house and uh, engrave stuff on the outside. And, th and that was really cool. And every single one of them was really excited about doing this project. Another excellent way to get yourself a laser into your school is by proving that this machine is very, very safe. Uh, we have uh, the speed, of course, and the accuracy, the usability, the ease of use, but now the safety. Uh, when that lid is closed, nobody can get at that laser. Your fingers are, are safe. The minute you open that lid, everything is turned off, completely safe. Um, the air coming out is filtered, completely safe. The machine itself is very quiet, so we have a sort of a whisper quiet machine. We have a whisper quiet extraction system, um, plugs into a regular 110 power. The safety is really, really well regarded, and we don't have to put it in a special shop um, with you know safety guards all around it. It can just be in a classroom, and in fact, some of the models you can just roll around. You roll the exhaust system you roll the laser around and you put it into each classroom they can be shared between classrooms and everybody just stays very safe and you get your work done